All right. Hey everybody, my name is Mark, and this is a 24 inch 2006 iMac with an ATI Radeon HD 2600 XT. Let's talk about that. Yeah, it takes a second to load. Looks to be good. Yeah, let's take a look around. I have the PCI Express adapter on the outside. That's uh, because there's just simply no space on the inside the way I had everything mounted. Just That's just how it ended up being. This is the six pin PCI Express power. And this is the connection, the data connection to the mini PCI Express on the inside of the computer. Got my little remote mounted over here. It actually still works by the way. Works just fine. Let me flip this whole computer around actually. All of this used to be inside until I messed up one of the power boards. This right over here takes the display inputs. I actually have <laughs> composite inputs over here. It's crazy, ain't it? I have S video in. I did have a different, like a completely different LCD panel inside of this computer uh, and You'll see in the picture, I mounted the power supply against the LCD panel on the inside and it worked for a while, but for some reason, something shorted out inside there. I'm not entirely sure how. So I was forced to pick up an entirely different display. And because this display is way thicker, uh, unfortunately I had to mount the inverter board on the whole back of the computer and it doesn't look pretty. Yeah, um, I forgot. I'm not really taking this thing apart. I have it taped together. Before I take this thing apart further, let me show you how this thing is powered on. <laughs> what in the world? And as you can see over there, that's a real 2006 iMac. There is no connection to the LVDS on board because there is no graphics card plugged in on board. This is what it looks like to have graphical hardware acceleration on a 2006 iMac with macOS Yosemite. I used the Piker Alpha Yosemite boot.efi files to get this OS working on here. This was originally developed with the intention of working on first and second generation Mac Pros, but also seems to work on other 2006 Macs. The graphics card in this iMac already has a Mac EFI ROM, so it posts with the boot screen. The GPU has a total power draw of just 19 watts, so I figured it would be worth the risk powering it off the iMac. There is a memory leak issue when using the Piker Alpha in El Capitan, so I'll just revisit that OS another time. Yes, take a look. This is a 2006 iMac, the original logic board, original power supply. Unlike the last project, I actually took out the heatsink, so there's no heatsink and no 7300 GT. I also took out the original hard drive and the original optical drive. I left the optical base sensor and the LCD temperature sensor and just a couple of things in here. I spliced the SATA cable into two different connections and one connector is going out over to the PCI Express right over here. The other one is going to the SATA SSD that's inside this iMac right over here. ATI Radeon HD 2600 XT. Got two extender cables and then In a nutshell, this is a slightly more usable iMac with a slightly newer version of macOS. You're able to use slightly newer apps than what's offered in macOS Lion, although iCloud has issues working as of recently. Firefox ESR78 allows for a mostly modern browsing experience, although much like the 2007 iMac, this one also struggles with heavy multitasking. It is, however, competent for basic tasks. 
Replacing the graphics card in this computer has been a decades long issue plaguing users online. Whether some would replace their graphics card with an OEM part, uh, others managed to find fixed GPU chips or even reflowed their own hardware. Uh, the question of upgradability has always led to a dead end or has not at all been documented. Well, in today's video, we can see you can actually upgrade the graphics card in your 2006 iMac via the airport slot. The modification doesn't work on GMA 950 Max at all, unfortunately. When testing on boards that have a soldered X1600 GPU, Yosemite will use the drivers for both GPUs and it'll hamper the performance of the 2600. One of my favorite things about having this computer modified like this is that it makes a very good looking external monitor. I have the M1 Mac Mini plugged in through DVI as a secondary display. See? I also set the same wallpaper over here. Ooh, look how spooky this is. An early Intel Mac with Apple Silicon supposedly on it. Alrighty, everyone. Thank you so very much for taking the time out of your day to watch my crazy computer project over here. Leave a comment, leave a like. I'm gonna leave a link down below for the music as well as the article that I wrote for this on lowendmac.com. Have a great rest of your day.